hello welcome uh today we're gonna well i thought i'd pop up because this arrived today and i thought i would just unbox it live here on youtube so welcome to the stream thank you very much for joining me straight away and if you're watching um, on the recorded version and the replay then please just any comments in the uh, chat are always very very welcome today we're going to go through well i'm going to get pretty much started straight away with unboxing the keyboard case for the remarkable two which i'm really excited to see and uh, then i'm going to talk a little bit about uh, well the next part i've called it's time to lose it with books so that's uh I'll, I'll leave that out there as the second title and then tiny bit of news today just talking about the kobo ellipsa 2e which is coming and then a bit more of a story time and then some Q&A as well. And if you've got any questions at any point, then do go ahead and chuck them in the chat. If you if you highlight them with uh, some multiple question marks before or after, then I'll see them and I'll sort of style them as we go. Very warm welcome. Please, somebody in the chat, just let me know that everything is coming through absolutely loud and clear and that you've got no problems hearing. And then, um, well, without further ado, let's get started into it. Remember that supers are available and uh, many thanks for joining might have a few questions for you so go ahead and get involved and answer those in the chat if you are interested in them, them as well so um just a really quick bit before we get started with this um uh, this last week i've been on a bit of a mission to find what is the best e-ink for travel what's the best kind of e-ink combo e-ink combo for travel um and well i was traveling through an airport with two very young kids recently and um that kind of surprised me <laughs> actually in terms of what was the best thing for travel. And uh, I really wanted to take the Tab Ultra, I've been loving using that, but uh, you know, I don't really check my work emails when I'm out and about when I'm, when I'm away from work. So, uh, you know, I'll make a rule of that for myself really. The, so I didn't really need that kind of keyboard case for emails, which I think that's a great tool for communication. That's a great tool for that type of work. I really wanted to take the Tab X, of course. That's my kind of daily driver at work at the minute. I absolutely love the Tab X, by the way, and stay tuned for the full review of that coming soon. But because of that sheer size, it's a bit of a no-go, really, the Tab X. Um, you know, you just if, if you're traveling, you're not necessarily going to need and want that big A4 size. I really thought it was going to be the Kindle Scribe. I really thought because I've been enjoying reading and learning on the, on the Kindle Scribe recently, I really thought this was going to be the one that I was going to take on this holiday. And, you know, I could sit and relax and enjoy reading some interesting stuff. And I really do believe that it's a resilient thing to do to read something related to work when you're traveling and actually making notes as you read and learn is a really useful thing about that Kindle Scribe. And I know you can't, write directly on the the actual <laughs> kindle books and that's a lot of chat about that recently but i really like not using the sticky notes but using the annotation feature so you can actually highlight the text and you can just make a handwritten annotation um please do let me know please in the chat a very warm welcome to you all if you're joining this live or watching the replay let me know that i'm coming through loud and clear so i really you know i was really i'm an and i thought i was going to go ahead and take the Kindle Scribe with me, but I decided against it in the end. And um, I actually took the Nova Air 2 and I took the Kindle Paperwhite. And well, my kind of first thoughts on those, um, I really thought that I was gonna do a bit more kind of reading, sort of professional reading. I do that on the Nova Air. And then I also thought that I would wanna do a little bit of relaxing reading, a little bit of maybe fiction, although I actually end up reading a bit of nonfiction on here as well, but nothing to do with work to take my mind off work as well. Um, although I do believe that and I have another trip coming. <laughs> it's really funny, I was mentioned traveling through the airport with young children. There's something a very clever friend of ours said recently, they said, when you're a parent of young children, you don't go on holiday, you go on trips. <laughs> and that was definitely the case. And really what came out of the bag was this Kindle Paperwhite just came out of the bag of those few minutes in the um, airport where I had a bit of downtime or a few minutes generally. And I just read on this. I read a really excellent book about teaching young people to read actually, The Art and Science of Primary Reading, which I very much recommend to you. Christopher Such, um, very well written book, very, very readable. And I'm currently reading In Cold Blood um, by Truman Capote, which is an absolute classic. 
Um, and again, I thought that I would really think, well, this is the one for travel. This Nova Air is the one for travel. But again, <laughs> I kind of overestimated how much time to focus and really make notes as I read I would get. Although, that being said, if I was only going to take one of these two, I still think it would have been the Nova Air because, as you can see, the size difference isn't big and you can read Kindles, of course, on the Nova Air. So this is the Nova Air that I've got, but uh, right now the recommendation would be the Nova Air 2, of course. Um, yeah, we had quite an <laughs> eventful plane journey and actually just relaxing into that ebook on the plane was uh, something that kind of got me through it when I was feeling a bit... Um, having a bit of a difficult time on that on that plane but i don't want to go into any more details you don't need any more details uh than that so in any case um i might also take the remarkable two when, once i've got this keyboard here uh, i might take that with me when i go on the next part of the trip let's see uh for that but oh the real winner the absolute real winner was actually the kindle kids edition which is a fabulous um this is just the ordinary kindle but this happens to be the kids edition and um yeah it's it's really really good you can buy these these are buddy phones that come with it i do have an unboxing of that but actually this was brilliant just for my daughter being able to plug in and listen to some books um on the plane uh, around the airport everything and just generally on the on the holiday in general just for a bit of downtime for her where she's not just looking at a screen the whole time um okay so let's get on with it then um questions in the chat please and um i'm going to look through any questions that you've got that you might want me to answer before we get into actually unboxing the kindle <laughs> the remarkable keyboard case we're actually going to unbox the remarkable keyboard case next and we're going to unbox the remarkable marker plus <laughs> excuse me which i've never had before i've never had the remarkable and what it's replacing i've never had the remarkable marker plus it's replacing the original remarkable marker for me and it's replacing the norris jumbo which i often use with the remarkable as well and the one that, that I, I couldn't find it today when i was looking for it but the one that i've most enjoyed using with the remarkable has been the lamy um, and if you've got any questions comments things you want me to look out for in that then do um, stick them in the chat whilst i just say thank you very much to ipvo for sponsoring this live stream. thanks very much to ipvo for sponsoring this live stream if you need to host webinars or meetings just like this one well ipvo have a natural and immersive solution for you until now, I've been using about £3,000 of camera, lens, microphone, tripods and capture cards just for this live stream. Did you notice the change in quality? Not that much, right? And if I tell you this camera, this IPVO camera, costs less than a sixth of that, you're certainly not getting a sixth of the quality, right? This is the Totem 180. It can capture an entire 180 degrees of your meter room with its video stitching technology. It's clever. It combines two 4 megapixel cameras, which reduces distortion and gives you a high resolution and natural view. My favorite benefit is it gives you clear and crisp audio with its pair of noise cancelling microphones. Hold down this button to switch from 120 degree view, which will fit about groups of five people, or 180 degree view to capture up to eight people. Or just press it once to go into the AI stage auto reframe and let it intelligently keep everyone in view. IPVO document cameras have been making an impact for my online teaching and for my modeling of physics questions in a classroom for many years now. They're the leading document camera for schools in the UK for very good reason. They deliver an amazing balance of quality, value, and ease of use. All of their designs are innovative and a real pleasure to use thanks ipvo for making this live stream possible okay so let's go ahead and have a look at this i think i'll start with the oh, i'll start with the <coughs> i'll start with the premium pen so it just sort of arrived here today so i thought i would jump online for you so apologies if anyone was thinking why didn't i get any notice this why can't i book for time in very happy easter to you all as well um let's start here with the marker plus Here we go. Um, let me know if you have the Marker Plus or you have the Remarkable, the Ordinary one as well. I do like, I've always seen this, I do quite like the way that they package the nibs in here as well. Generally, it's just a, and the way they package things, uh, package it in terms of their marketing, package it in terms of the physical things, are always very, very good. <clears throat> it always feels like you're working with Kind of premium note paper type you know stationers things 
and this is the marker plus it's slightly different in terms of the weight from the ordinary remarkable marker it is slightly heavier you can feel it's a more kind of metallic kind of weighty feel i do feel this is the original remarkable marker and i do feel that this as you wrote it sometimes gave you a little bit of flex <clears throat> And of course, from that very original one, one of the differences is they have the snap on the side here as well. Uh, let's just give it a very quick whirl before I move on to what you're probably here for if you've read the title, which will be the uh, type folio unboxing, which will come in just a moment. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, it's a really nice feel. I'm not at all surprised that the nibs feel really, really good. Of course, they would do. This is plastic screen or plastic top surface to the screen at least. And it's a kind of cardboard nib. One feature of the Plus is that it does have the eraser. Okay, I'll come back to that in a little while, but let's get on with it now as well typing without distractions. I was a little bit surprised that they brought this uh, keyboard case. Um, I didn't really think it was where they were going because they're not going for things like email or anything like that, but they have gone here and uh, this is what we have. Now, everyone seems to be leaning towards this, actually making, um, actually making a keyboard case that you can type with, actually integrating more with type text straight on the device. So it's interesting that Remarkable are doing that. And across all their different apps, their desktop app, their web app, phone app, all these things, is all kind of integrating towards type text. So it's got a little tear here at the top here. Always an elegant unboxing from me. Normally what I do is I sort of smash edit these little sections together and I probably will do that for an edited version of this that might come on my channel in the future if I get around to making that. There we are. So I've gone for the sepia brown. It just sort of seems to fit more in with my sort of style of accessories that I've got in general. And here it is. It's a really interesting design that they've gone for. You can tell straight away that it is going to increase the thickness of the world's finest tablet, which is their big marketing um, statement that they've made time and time and time again. Um, very clever the way that they've hidden the keyboard here. There is no other kind of case like this. Nobody is making their keyboard cases like this. Most other people are just happy to let you sort of have your fingers on the keys, uh, you know, the keys being visible underneath and... Um, you just get an uncomfortable feeling on, on the keys, almost like you're clicking them, even though you're not connected. It does have a quick start guide, which I'm sure there isn't much to it. It's not, it looks like you might want to open it out, but it isn't. It's just a double-sided bit of card there. Just simply snap your device into place, lift, and hopefully it works. There we are. Um, I will get into the questions in the chat as well. I will do that after our next kind of break. It snaps in really easily there. And in terms of a folio, oh, it does feel a lot heavier, guys. That is one thing that you are going to notice straight away if you're used to a thinner case as I am, you're going to notice that straight away that is a lot heavier i think i'm right in saying it's almost now double the weight uh, it's also almost now double the price as well so how does this work so it lifts up like this reveal the keyboard and snaps into place and this can slip underneath there as well um keyboard just as focused as you are <laughs> i'm very focused of course <laughs> how did you know <laughs> you successfully connected the type earlier right choose the preferences um, I am a PC person, so that's the way to do that. And then I've got type, so it automatically comes up with type. Let's have a little, um, a little try of this.
Don't know if you can hear that. Let's move the microphone a bit closer. Thanks, Spoiled Badger Milk. You're a star. We'll get back to you as well. Uh, Non-alcoholic uh, beverage of choice. Yep, here's uh, Brooklyn. Uh, this is probably the best one. The Brooklyn special effects. It's top, top quality. Because it's evening time here. It's evening time. And... Um, <laughs> Everyone seems to have complained about this small backspace. What I would say is that, like, I, I thought that as I first hit it, but I've had no trouble finding that every single time. I prefer a small backspace than a small enter key any day of the week. The small enter keys are the ones that I find weird. Um, oh, it's gone. Oh, that was a heading automatically. Fair enough. And how do I get that? Yeah. More larger text than that, please. Um, so it's automatically a, a heading when you start typing something. That's fine. That's good. And what I've typed in my notes is a little smiley like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is really good. It does feel good. It does feel comfortable. It's it's not tiny. It's not massive as well. I don't know if you heard, heard that as well. It does look amazing. How does it feel compared to the Tab Ultra's keyboard case is a good question. Um, maybe I'll get those out and have a little bit of a comparison after I've talked through what I've uh, planned as well. Um, all right, then the bits that were breaking in the original batches were apparently... That's quite nice the way that snaps down. The the little tiny bit of plastic right at the edge here was breaking. And apparently the the fold over here as well. Um that's not on manual focus at the minute. Um so the fold over at the corner here. So that's sort of two corner pieces. And what I would say is if you ever get anything, if you ever get even a hint of those things going, then right to remarkable straight away would be my um my suggestion to you and tell them and they should just replace things straight away because that's and i told me that's what they'll do but uh, you know by having stopped all of the uh, shipping then they are committing to giving you a quality product that doesn't break like that and then they did have that issue they stopped all the shipping <laughs> excuse me they stopped all the shipping and it's finally here after that delay they did go for under promise and over deliver there in terms of that delay and it was like they said seven to nine weeks. I think it was maybe four weeks I was waiting. Um, everyone seemed to complain about a small backspace. I didn't really find that an issue. And of course, like me, you never make mistakes in typing. So uh, I'm just being silly there. It's a bit, yeah, no, it's, a, it's odd at first where it, you know, where you pull it up to get used to it. Um, it's odd when you're used to just flipping something over and getting the keyboard that was on the back. But it really is smooth and it's gone straight in there and it, without me even noticing really that it's gone between landscape and non. Yeah, I mean, it's something that Apple pride themselves on, this like one finger lift up of the top of their computers, the MacBooks. That that is a very intuitive, it, it all sort of the mechanism all sort of clicks into play um, the moment you lift on those two little tabs at the side, I don't know if you're seeing these, these two little tabs here, they aren't clicky, they aren't doing anything like that, but the pressure in the right place, and there must be some springs or some, some kind of, you know, folded um, metal in there, which is actually making things actuate just quite quickly. I know there is another sort of way that you can have this. You can have it lying down a little bit flatter, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, like that. And it still works. It's still connected because the pogo pins are in this beam here. Um, so that's cool there as well. And this would be if you were trying to combine the handwritten. With the type as well. And then the type itself. I click on that, do I? Yeah. Yeah. The handwritten notes actually move with the type. 
Yeah, I like this. I'm going to be entirely honest. This is my first kind of thoughts about it. It really is quite clever the way they've done this as well. Um, so, but once again, what I think this is, is not about long sessions of typing. I don't think that's what it's about. For me, I think it's about you're using the... That's a little bit less. Yeah. Coming up from that lower down uh, angle is a little bit less obvious, a little bit less intuitive than the previous one. So what I think it's about for me is actually using the handwriting recognition and then using the keyboard to make edits. So let's try that all about. OK, so uh, let's try a little bit of something. Okay, so now let's go ahead and convert that to text. It is quite reliable, the super, the <laughs> super notes reliable as well. The remarkable handwriting conversions text. And now, as I'm going to edit that, I'm going to flip that up, use it in this orientation. Thanks for joining me on my mission to evaluate everything and help students and professionals become deeper, more evaluative thinkers so they can learn anything with confidence and overcome any of life's challenges. Well, that's actually all there. But now let's say, for instance, I might want to make a title there and say, this is my mission statement. Um, now I can turn that into a typed text. And now that will be available. It will be available on the web app. It will be available on the desktop app. It will be available in all those different places for me to access and use in all the different ways. No longer have I just got initially, which is just send by email down here, which is my only choice to do with the type of text. Um, okay, cool. Um, so this is my first sort of thoughts on this now, but stay tuned for the next few weeks um, for a full review after I've used this. I'm gonna make this a bit of a daily driver at work. Yeah, I so far, I like it. So far, I'm impressed. Um, there's questions in the chat that I will get to about how, uh, <laughs> thanks, um, <laughs> about how sort of premium it all feels. Um, and yeah, I, I will go do that as well. And I'll, maybe I'll pull out the uh, books ultra as well and have a little look at that a little bit later, maybe after I've done my next section on books. Um, any questions in the chat at all, then uh, just ping them in there. Try and make them really obvious if they're questions by putting lots of question marks before them or after them and I'll see them a little bit more easier, um, a little bit more easily. <laughs> and obviously, the Super Chat is very, very, very um, warmly received. I can't promise to answer everything, um, but if you do, then uh, I will make that a bit more of a priority as we go forwards. Um, yeah, and one thing about this is the Remarkable is a very cheap device. So one thing just to say about the whether you should buy these premium accessories or whether you should buy third-party accessories. I'll get out now. Um, so the Remarkable itself is actually not very expensive. The Remarkable itself is now £300. You can sort of always find it for. Um, and they do give you, I think, a year of free uh, Connect, which is only 2 a month now anyway. And so that's not very expensive. Well. But should you buy then? So you buy the Remarkable and you buy. This is an AO2, which I believe I've got a link for um, in the description as well. Case, which is like £30 on Amazon. And you can buy, you can buy something like this. This is the uh, Norris Digital Jumbo, which is great. Uh, the, the feel of this isn't great, the Norris nib, but you can, um, well, you can't replace these nibs, but you could also buy a Lamy, uh, and then you can replace that with 
with remarkable nibs. Um, and, and then it, the feel will be exactly the same. But the Norris Jumbo comes with an eraser on the back as well. It doesn't have the magnetic snap, so you'd be stuck with that. But again, the Norris Jumbo is about sort of 45 quid on Amazon. You can even go for the Norris, sort of classic looking one, and that's even less. Um, it just looks like a pencil, uh, which is a really cool look. Or the, um, the Lamy is around 50 quid as well. And then if you buy the Lamy, then you can then buy remarkable nibs and the feel will be exactly the same that's what i did for a long long time um or with this as well so you can then make the whole package you about 400 pounds slightly less actually uh and be really happy with that and i've been happy with that i haven't bought a remarkable folio itself for the remarkable two however the keyboard case <laughs> is well, it's like 180 quid, is it? Something like that. It's nearly 200 quid. Let's just call it 200 quid. The premium stylus, the marker plus, is um, marker plus is 130 quid or something. It's 125, right? So already you've now pretty much doubled the cost of the device if you buy the premium accessories uh, so one thing i will be doing now i can actually compare these i've bought these so that i can do that comparison for you uh, we'll make a <coughs> excuse me i'll make a full comparison of premium versus uh versus the um the third party uh, the cheaper accessories so i really think the one one appealing thing about the remarkable is that it is not so expensive so stay tuned for a comparison of those in a full uh, in a few weeks as well um, I'm going to move on slightly just now and then I will come back to a little comparison for this as well because I want to talk about it's time to lose it with books <laughs> it's time to uh, to yeah what what what, what do I mean by that so um right so your job is really really hard and you work really really hard at work no doubt and uh it can be really stressful um but but none of us deserve to burn out none of us deserve to no, no professional deserves to burn out and by evaluating your thinking, you really uh, raising the level of your thinking to this evaluative level, you raise your thinking above those daily worries. And um, by planning, by learning, by uh, being really organized, by improving your productivity, that um, you are going to make yourself feel more comfortable at work. And these can all be done really, really well. Those things can all be done elegantly on these wonderful ink tablets. And really what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about turning kind of toxic productivity, productivity, which is just like, I've got to get things done. I've got to get things finished. I've got to get this out. I've got to get this produced um, into a resilient productivity. And if you actually use these amazing tools here, I think that you become more resilient at work. We were discussing this um, just the other day at home. Uh, we we're talking about productivity YouTube. And, and what I mean, what I mean by that is YouTubers that sort of, give you tips and tricks on how to be more productive and it's kind of like it's always aimed at just doing more in less time or it's aimed at kind of trying to trick yourself into um trying to trick yourself into being more focused and i'm not somebody that struggles to be focused and i've got to be honest with you there. like uh and i think maybe that those kind of productivity youtubers out there is a little bit more aimed at sort of gen z type of people and uh, you know this isn't this isn't something that I think that the that, that my age group I'm 37. Uh, let me know in the chat what ages you guys are, but it's not something that I particularly struggle with to keep myself focused. Um, and then there's something that some videos have been discussing and using. Like if you think about like what 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 do you exude? What is your main kind of passion? What's the thing that you care most deeply about? And the way to put that to yourself is if you squeezed you, if somebody squeezed you, what would come out? So I said this to my wife. I said, right, <laughs> what, what, if you squeezed me, what would come out? And obviously love was the first thing that she mentioned because she'd be thinking about me as a family person and uh, family always comes first in all of our lives, I'm sure. Um, and th that that's a massive deal, obviously. But as a professional, what did she say? She said, well, I think like you're very discerning, like you're very good at evaluative thinking, you've got great taste. And these are the things that she talked about. So she, she mentioned that you're very good at appraising um, things 
over a wide range of topics like art, literature, and technology. And so I was thinking about this a bit longer. And one skill that I know I have is to make up my own mind on things. I know that I'm very good at coming to my own conclusions and my own evaluations of things. And I know this is what my bosses really like me for in meetings. What, what they think that I'm really good at in meetings is that they, they say, well, I, I bring to the table that evaluative thinking, good ideas, my own thoughts, my own appraisal of things, not just <laughs> very much the opposite, actually, of Emperor's New Clothes, and very much like my own ideas of, 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 of uh, you know, what's useful and what's good or bad about a particular set of choices we might be making. That's what I bring into meetings. That's what I bring to the table. And it's important to be able to know your own skills and be able to talk about them in this way. Um, it's why I called my website uh, Evaluate Everything. And these shows, I'm more and more referring to them as Evaluate Everything. So I think that's why I do well. And I think that's why I can teach you to do better. And so I hope you'll believe me when I say that I'm really enthusiastic for these e-ink tablets. I have spent a lot of time now evaluating these e-ink tablets. And my evaluation of this is they've truly improved my life at work. And so if it's your first time, <laughs> if, it's, if it's your first time with e-ink, it's about time you popped that cherry. It's about time that you actually lost it with books and i think this is the one to try i think the best device to try e-ink on right now is the nova air 2 and so this is the one but the nova air one is fabulous and if you can find one second hand it's a great one to try but the nova air 2 might be the best one to try on let me know what you think about that um in terms of your own sort of experiences with that uh go for it you will find an e-ink tablet to be truly invaluable and you'll love it and then you'll probably want to buy yourself a lar larger one and off you go because then you'll have something that fits in your, your jacket pocket if you like, something that fits easily and you can pull out of an uh, aeroplane, uh, you can pull out on the aeroplane when your children have just been sick on you and uh, you can just, <laughs> you've got this fabulous device that you can read and think on and that you can do really, really useful um, things on aside from just being a great e-reader. So yeah, this is really, really good. Um, th this, I suggest, is where you try e-ink for the first time. I'm going to have a little look through the chat next. I'm going to look for some questions, and then I'm going to get back with the tiny little bit of news and the one more thing and any more questions uh, for you guys, from you guys, um, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat. will be all very, very warmly welcome. But thank you once again to IPVO, who are the sponsor of today's live stream thanks very much to ipvo for sponsoring this live stream so far i've been using interchangeable lens cameras boom arm an external usb microphone and capture cards for this live stream that's thousands of pounds worth of gear but you can get 90 percent of the quality with these two cameras from ipvo for less than a sixth of the price i'm trying to get as close as i can to broadcast quality but if you need a solution for your video calls or for productive idea sharing or for discussions around a product Go for simplicity and affordability and ease of use. Also, with my sort of semi-pro setup, I almost always have technical issues just before going live. But these cameras from IPVO, they never fail. Just plug into USB ports and away you go. Honestly, if you need to get online just to teach a lesson, to present a slide deck or show off a skill, these cameras are an affordable quality solution. This top-down shot is from the V4K Pro, which is their latest in USB document camera. It's got an AI noise cancelling microphone on top and a built-in LED light. But you could go up to the VZX, which is their top-of-the-range desktop document camera. You can go PC-free or even wirelessly broadcast from anywhere in the room. For most teachers, they'll really want to check out the V4K Pro, which is the great quality USB document camera. You can check out some of my reviews of these products from the IPVO playlist in the description. And when you're ready, there's a link to go to these products on their website as well thanks ipo for sponsoring this live stream cool okay so we're going to cover a little bit of news um soon and this will be arriving the uh, new kobo ellipsa 2e and i will probably do an unboxing in just this same way um let's have a little look through now some of the comments and some of the questions uh one thing <laughs> i still prefer the books <laughs> yeah okay i probably still do Let's pull it out. Let's have a little side by side. Um, why not? That seems to be a sensible thing to do. One thing about the the books, you've got this. Um, uh, you've got the fingerprint reader now, which after a while it won't let you do. You have to put the pin code in every now and then, which is very sensible, I think. Um, 
let's use the keyboard case side by side as well. And incidentally, now they've made a new type of note taking app, um, new type of note taking note, <laughs> a new uh, a new note type, which is a type note. That's a silly thing to say, isn't it? And uh, I asked, please, can I have a please can I have a um, word processor? <laughs> And that's what we've got. And it's even got styles. It's got, you know, it's got all the different things that you might expect. It's not quite up to the, uh, the sort of Word, Microsoft Word sort of level of functionality, but um, it is good. And now, And here's where I, you have essentially a word processor now. And here's where I absolutely love this because if I start typing, then I can bring up this, the books keyboard, and now I can use voice recognition. And the voice recognition is generally pretty accurate. And that's something that Remarkable 2 is not going to be able to do. Is it going to be something that potentially Remarkable 3 might do? And this is one thing I think they might be considering is now they've got this folio um, case here. It's which is called the Remarkable Type Folio. It's not called the Remarkable 2 Type Folio. So it could be a window for them actually to, um, to make another device which would fit into this. And maybe it could have some extra features like a front light, like a microphone to allow them to do this and more processing power that you would need to be able to do this, which the Tab Ultra can do just seamlessly. So let's have a little look how well it did with that. And of course, now you've got the type to be able to go and make those changes. More remarkable, it's gone for two, as in T double O. Is it going to be something that potentially remarkable three might do? And this is one thing that I think they might be considering is now they've got this folio case here, which is called the remarkable type folio. It's not called the remarkable two type folio. Um, they've gone for photo there. You see how it's just it's just more natural to be able to use the keyboard to make those edits than it is to try and make it with stylus or the on-screen keyboard. It's just a more natural thing. So it could be a window for them to actually to to make another device which would fit into this. And maybe you could have some extra features like a front light, like a microphone to allow it to do this and more processing power that you would need to be able to do this, which the type, which the tab ultra <coughs> can do just seamlessly. So let's have a little look at how well it did with that. Well, it did pretty well, didn't it? So there's like three edits I made in there. So that's pretty darn good. Um, if I bring the microphone really close to this, do, do you want to hear that? Um, if I bring the microphone really close to this, then I can type away a little bit more on this and see how it goes and I'll maybe put them side by side and just do a little bit of that so here is the tab ultra on this side and the noob <laughs> let's get used to that on the right Really, really quite a similar feel, I would say. Yeah, nothing in that for me. Um, maybe. I think the Ultra has got a slightly deeper travel, and I think maybe the. Uh, yeah, sorry, Alan. <laughs> try my best I don't think I can zoom out any further on this camera um, <laughs> there's nothing you know may, maybe the remarkable feels a little bit more clicky a little bit more fine refined a little bit more um, finely tooled but I'm not all that convinced about that statement either I think maybe
Yeah, I think maybe I prefer the Ultra. Just, I'm interested to see, are they actually any difference in size? They're pretty much the same size keyboard. Uh, and you can see that the, the one thing about the Ultra is that they've had to decide to make that the keyboard is actually slightly larger. The keyboard case is slightly larger than the device itself. You can just see that here to allow them to fit in those kind of full size keys. They are almost identical in size, in fact. Um, so there you are. Uh, I don't think you need to make the decision on device in terms of how their keyboard feels. That would be my thoughts there. So that was good, right? That was was that useful? Hopefully that was. Give it a thumbs up. You know all the good stuff, um, and like and share all of those things. Right. Thanks so much. Myself a room. Okay. So um, some other questions that I saw whilst uh, you were watching my ad read. Um, got the books not two plus very recently. I must say it's totally worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that point there. You buy it, and I know the feeling because I, I was there when I first bought the remarkable. Like, should I really spend all this money on this device? But you get it, and you're like, wow, it really fits in, and it's not expensive, really, is it? If you use it every single day, which I do at work, absolutely, and throughout the day, every single day. Uh, yeah, they're too expensive in in, in Europe. Um, they're only a distributor, although I've had a lot of comments since I've been talking about this, that actually the cheapest way is to actually buy it from the United States shop. The cheapest way in the UK, rather, is to buy it in the United States shop and actually have it shipped in here. So take that for what it, what it is. That's what some commenters have said. I haven't bought it um, from both shops to be able to compare. Unrelated remark, where it's possible to display two different notes in a split screen view in the default notes app on the tab Ultra, I think it is. I think that what you have to do though on the on the reading app and on the notes app is you need to actually um, you need to be in the notes app on full screen and then go into uh, side by side view through here I believe is it in more. No, I'm not seeing it. I don't think is it in customized tool toolbar. I'm not seeing it just there. Maybe someone else in the chat who's uh, a books user might be able to help us out there. But I know you can do split screen. But one of the things which you can't do is then open another notes. Well, you can you can have another book. You can't open another instance of notes, though. I'm sure I've done that before. I'm absolutely certain I've done that before. Uh, most of the time, though, my notes book, my notebook anyway, is my planner, which is actually a PDF in any case. So most of the time I'm working with a PDF, which is like a notebook, and I write within this with uh, the notes app next door to it. So um, can anyone add that um, if I'm missing something there? Um, if you can definitely do notes side by side. I don't think you can have two instances of the notes app. I did think there was a way to actually have two notes side by side. Um, you can definitely do two books side by side, so two PDFs. But again, you have to do it through the notes app and then you go, um, you go into more, I believe. No. I do this all the time, but I can't seem to remember where. You normally just get the tabs at the top, don't you? And again, probably because I'm already in split screen, that's exactly why it is. So because I'm already in split screen, it's not giving me the option to do that, but I can definitely have two documents side by side. Split view, there you are. And of course, you can also have, you can have another doc and you can have notes and this doc. So you can actually have a document that's linked to this PDF, this book, um, which is, that is a fabulous thing to do. And you've got all your tabs up here, look, for all the different PDFs, um, which are sort of always where you left off, left them, unless you fully close them. Yeah, the books platform is fabulous for stuff like that. Uh, Dijon says, Re Remarkable seems to be focused on replacing the notepad. I wonder if the limited set feature and better battery life compared to the other e-ink devices. Yes, it does have great uh, battery life. There's no doubt about that. 
Um, it's all, also now we're powering this keyboard case, but keyboards aren't very high power devices. It does have fabulous battery life. There's no denying that. Um, yeah, the, the, the Ultra and the Tab um, X don't have fabulous battery life, although they do have large batteries and have fabulous battery life because they do more. There's a question really in terms of that. Do you want to do more on ink? And now that I have this with the, the note with the keyboard case, the uh, Ultra and the Tab X itself was so good with other apps. I do find more and more things to do with e-ink. And I think that that's something to really, really think about. <clears throat> Are you going to buy the Remarkable and end up thinking to yourself, yeah, um, I now want to be able to do more on my e-ink tablet than I can actually do with Remarkable. So I do think about that. Brandon says, thanks. Um, yeah, <laughs> new to your channel, always happy when you upload. Thanks, mate. I do try and produce as much content as I, as I can for you guys. And um, hopefully, yeah, fingers crossed, more to come in the years to come. Thank you so much for your comment. Does the leather feel expensive? Yeah, I think it's all fake leather. It's all sort of vegan leather. Um, it does have a nice premium feel to it, the whole, the whole thing. It does, like everything that Remarkable do, it does have a nice feel to it. That is really nice. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, everyone is my buddy. That's why we're, we're here, I suppose. Um, yeah, hopefully that was good for comparison to the Tab Ultra's keyboard case. Obviously, you've seen uh, the way that the Remarkable works. The Tab Ultra, when you've got unfolded in the keyboard case, you've got all the keys on the back, so you're holding it, and you, you, your kind of hand is on the keyboard, the keys all the time. So it's a bit of a weird feeling, but it's you know most keyboard cases work like that. Remarkable is the first one to actually work like this. Whether they might might be this is the 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 norm going forwards it might be that this is actually the way now to do keyboard cases remarkable might have actually made a bit like apple do a design innovation that everyone will copy in the near future yeah um absolutely the three major ones books remarkable and superno and for that reason I'm very happy to say that I have a very popular video, uh, several very popular videos, which compare books, Remarkable and Supernote. So I do hope and I try my best to go through in a very highly evaluative way and give you kind of metrics and different scoring systems so you can find which one is best for you. I am certain at the minute the best one for me, I was just wanting to buy one, I would be buying the books. And I'm not sure whether I would be shelling out for the Tab X, probably would to be honest because it's fabulous but the tab ultra um, and i'd say and if you're not sure which one to buy then go for the small books to give it a go um, and you'll find yourself using it every day you'll find that you absolutely love it um, and yeah but there's reasons to buy all of those three major ones absolutely that's why the choice is so difficult uh, tab ultra is good for drawing practice but you don't want to draw with it in the keyboard case because the magnets sometimes put you off the, I, I did a comparison recently. Yeah, thank you, Alan. You said this for me. Uh, between the Tab Ultra Remarkable 2 and Kindle Scribe for Drawing. Just rewatched it today. Oh, how great. That's fabulous to hear. Um, in be interesting to know if there's any magnets in this that actually put off the drawing, uh, drawing lines uh, on this keyboard case, wouldn't it? Let's have a little look. It's in its keyboard case. I wonder if it actually gives you any funny lines. maybe yeah yeah there is yeah these bits here look i'm pretty sure it might just be jitter yeah can you see that that's definitely going around the magnet isn't it and that is where the thing is is snapping to that so yeah i don't think that's avoidable then in terms of a keyboard case uh, and uh, ink tablet, the way the Wacomir mask screen works with magnets, it's electromagnetic res resonance. There is no, I think, way to avoid having some of that, which if I take it out of its case, won't be an issue and hasn't been an issue in its normal case uh, for me before. Yeah, see straight, straight through. Oh no. There is a slight wobble there. Hmm, maybe a bit more deeper testing um, for drawing is coming soon. 
Cool. Let's crack on. Uh, impeccable handwriting. Thank you very much. I thought I made a few errors in there. Actually, spoiled badger milk, but thanks for your for your uh, endorsement. Yeah, I will make it as quick as I can. <laughs> so no, it isn't that quick for me. My apologies for that. Um, the Lamy is awesome. Absolutely, Alan says. Thank you very much. And yeah, absolutely love this. Um, the the Lamy is awesome, but also this. Uh, I should get my books tab ultra in a few weeks, and I'm hyped. And then everyone says, "Wow, just congratulations! Join the club." You know, get you get get used to it. It is absolutely fa fabulous. Um, yeah, it works. Um, Tipica uh, says it works. It's a bit like the Apple Pencil, um, but it but it isn't in that it doesn't need. There's no charging for it. Um, it is almost as quick as the Apple Pencil, but it isn't quite as quick as the Apple Pencil in terms of its latency. So the Apple Pencil, because it's charged and is always talking via Bluetooth, the the um, iPad knows exactly where that pencil is before you've touched the screen. It's actually predicting when you're going to touch the screen. Whereas this relies on essentially when it gets close to the screen, there's this little little solenoid in here which feels the um, the electromagnetic. Uh, sort of field from the, the screen the screen is creating and that little solenoid then makes its own little field which as you get closer obviously the strength of that clear uh, field and the position of that field gets stronger and when you press in when you get the pressure you're then pushing a magnet in deeper into that little solenoid which is then finally um, telling the screen that, that it's been pressed in further so this is electromagnetic resonance so it's actually a changing magnetic field, which is actually inducing a little current in here, uh, which is then making a magnetic field. It's a transformer, essentially. It's a very small, uh, very clever little transformer. It's a fabulous piece of technology, the Wacom EMR technology. Whereas the um, Apple Pencil is doing that, but it also has a current itself. Um, so it's not, it's not being induced by the screen. It's actually being made by the pencil itself. And so that field is kind of permanent as it moves towards the screen that field is picked up as well right i'm going to um, come back to some of these other ones just a little bit later on but i want to talk very briefly about a couple of um things now i want to talk about uh it's hopefully this one yes that's what we are the cobra ellipsa 2e and that is going to come um and be reviewed on my channel soon i'm really interested to see what they've done because i did review excuse me I did review the Kobo Ellipsa and, um, you know, I wasn't entirely negative. I wasn't entirely positive about it either. And um, I think that this is a, a good device, the Kobo Ellipsa, if this is the first one, by the way. This is a good device if you're already in the Kobo ecosystem. You know, it's a it's a absolutely fine device. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, if this was the only ink tablet that I was, I could use, I would still love it. <laughs> and I would, you know, I think it's, it's a, it's a great device. Um, what I really liked about it was the, what I really liked about it was the, um, the advanced notebook. Uh, what I didn't like about it was the stylus and you can see, and I said, there'll be a time when I need to use the stylus. And it won't work because it, it will have run out of charge. And that time is now. Oh, no, there we are. It's, it has arrived. And it's got buttons. It's got two buttons, one for highlight and one for um, erase. All good. And actually, the advanced notebook is... The handwriting recognition is good, um, but you have to like double tap it. This is what I don't like about it. Um, and of course, it's not going to get that because, well, uh, I didn't quite write it out. I didn't fit it in. But the the way that you edit is actually pretty intuitive. Uh, and, and I've I've got used to this and, and used it and it does work really quite well. 
although that, that's not a good example. Um, but there are things that were really, really good on this, and certainly the advanced notebook is one of them. As a reader, it's really good as well. On the advanced notebooks, you can also do uh, you can also do equations, which is really, really useful. But what's wrong with it? Well, the three things that I think that I'm really excited to see if they have completely changed and made better. Well, I know one thing that they now have dual color lights on the um, on the new one. Uh, so that's pleasing to see they are they do have dual color lights. And they've improved the stylus in terms of they now have a stylus which is not still not uh, Wacom EMR, which they, they should have gone down that route in my opinion, but at least it's not a little triple A battery that sits in the back of it. It is actually something you can plug into a USB-C and charge. But again, that's a very old style of technology now. Uh, so so those two things are an absolute must. The You can probably just about make that out. Can you now that, um, and it's something that I have talked about before, the latency is not as good and the, the general writing feel is not as good as the others it's not terrible it's, it's not it's not awful at all but it isn't as good as the books tablets or the remarkable um or the kindle scribe or loads of other things as well what other things do they need to improve they need the one more thing they needed to improve probably was the um was the case as well? No, it was the actual, the way the advanced rec um, notebooks work is what I want to see improve. So what I really want to see is I want to be able to write and then have it recognize my handwriting in the background um, and see that, that I can't tell which ones are advanced notebooks and which ones aren't just off the, off the, uh, screen here but what i wanted to have it do is actually to be able to write and then recognize what i'm writing in the background whilst i'm writing the next line because that will make it more of a flowy device in my opinion and that's what i think they need to do they need to go back to um so you can see this So the Kobo Ellipsa 2E, I hope will be, yeah, see, where's it gone? It's just, I'm sure it's just there. They need to improve the flow of this device. It worked just fine there. Um, they just need to make that better. And the way to make that better is to have it be recognizing the previous line whilst you're writing the next line and for it to do that all in the background. And this can be done because we know that's the way that Supernote have done theirs as well now as well. So I'll be really interested to see if they've made that just faster. And lots of people complain that it's a laggy device. I wouldn't describe it as laggy, um, although I think perhaps it is compared to a lot of the other devices, a little bit underpowered. So let's hope I uh, can't find anything in this um, <clears throat> there their um, marketing page about the actual improvements to the, the 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 hardware in there whether it's faster whether it's got more uh, ram and, and a fast faster processor but let's hope it has to make it not have that experience that people have had uh, also the eraser is now on the back of the pen is another improvement also they've added google drive which is coming soon so they are going to add google drive which will be better for me because I'm I'm no longer a Dropbox user. Nothing wrong with Dropbox, of course, but um, there's that. And then they're talking here about Readwise, which allows you to update to Notion, Roam, Evernote, and so on. But then they say this is a paid service, so I have no idea if that's something that you'd want to use Readwise at all as well. But Kobo is definitely a good reading platform. There's the tech specs, uh, two gigahertz there. <clears throat> And I'll look at this in a bit more detail as well. I purposefully haven't watched a lot of the original reviews that have come out um, because I, I want to make up my own mind. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't want to preempt this. Um, but let's look forward to having that. Let's look forward to doing an unboxing of that in this same sort of way, perhaps. Um, or I will do an unboxing of first source video and a full review. And again, not an expensive device, a good solid price, a good competitive price. 
it will not have the 300 dots per inch screen that the, Co the Kindle Scribe has. Um, so there's that. But it will have something that lots of people are looking for uh, that the Kindle Scribe doesn't have, which that you'll be able to annotate directly onto Kobo um, notebooks. And the way it does that is when you then actually, sorry, Kobo books itself. So when you then change the font size, it, it leaves the annotations in a previous, in the previously scaled uh, view and then you can sort of click it and it will show you that previously scaled view where you made your annotations so if you're someone that ever changes your font size then you'll, you'll need to use that to go back and it does it on here um, already so you can annotate on for instance war and peace <laughs> um, and when you then change the font size it that will disappear. Well, no, it has stayed there, actually. There must be some views that it won't let me see that. When I get to that bit, it'll say, ah, look, you made a scribble here. Click on that, and it shows me my scribble in a separate view there. So if you're someone that's desperate to be able to write into, can I change this? Revert to these settings, look. There you are. Now I can carry on that scribble. Um, if you're someone that is desperate to actually write on the books themselves, then this might be the choice for you. If you're not just totally a diehard Kindle fan and you want to live in the Kindle um, ecosystem. Right. Um, so that's that. So I hope they've changed those, basically those three things. I hope they've improved the advanced notebook. So it's just a bit, <coughs> a bit more flowy. I know, I know they've added the dual color front lights, which is fabulous. Um, and, that the pen has got now USB-C charging, although they should have gone for whack on me and last stylus, that would have been made more compelling. I also know they've changed the case such that um, the case doesn't have a bucket that it sits in, but the case just clips onto the side. Because actually the first thing I noticed about this device, when I first saw the reviews of this device, I thought, oh my word, that case just makes the whole thing so much bigger. When you think we live in a world where um, Remarkable have one of the big marketing points that Remarkable have made. I can get the thing out. Um, is the world's thinnest tablet. You take something which is actually a perfectly lovely, slender reading device, really nice device to hold, um, and then you put it in something which is an absolutely huge thing. And you think, like, Remarkable are now fitting a keyboard, this is the Remarkable with its keyboard case, in less of a footprint than Kobo just had. For their original Ellipsa case, then you, you know this is not 21st century style, is it? Um, so what they've got now on the 2E is going to be a case that just clips on the side, so you never have anything on the back. You just have something on the front. So let's have a little um, look forward to that. It also seems to to flip on the wrong side, like the non-book you know, the, the side you wouldn't have the spine, like a left-handed spine of a book or something like that. So that'd be an interesting thing to check out. Look forward to that. Okay, um, last thing just to go and have a little look at before I look back at your questions is uh, what I've called it, this idealism, dejection and evaluation. Um, and well, you know, and I when I started work and I probably you're the same when I first became a professional person, when I first became a teacher, um, you know, I was very idealistic and I just wanted to be the very best professional that I can be. And I still want to be the very best professional that I can be. And I think as you go through your professional career, you perhaps get a little bit less idealistic. And I remember being um, in a, 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 a untenable position in the job. And um, this is the closest I've ever been to burnout. And burnout is a really hot topic at the minute. And I remember, I don't know if you if you read this resonates with you, I remember being in the shower thinking, I just don't want this to, to shower to end. I don't want to have to go to work and uh, I don't want to do the commute. I don't want to go to where I'm not valued and, and I'm, I know that I'm not able to do a good job. And that was the difficulty there, really. I had that bad time because I knew that the circumstances were not enabling me to do a good enough job. Um, so this is just a story really about going through those three phases of idealism, then into dejection and then into evaluation. And, um, you know, this is, this is something I hope 
that can tell you more about me and something that we can work with together and that as a community uh, we can all learn together as well um may maybe you you entered the uh, world of work wanting to change things you know with lots of ideas and then you had that the job you know the the one do, do you all remember there's a time in your career where somebody persuaded you to become a realist <laughs> uh, do, or do you remember a time when you feel like, oh gosh this job now is not what i thought it would be and um I, I suddenly become becomes a job that you didn't like going to the one where that commute just wasn't long enough and as i say the one where you wish the shower wouldn't end or you just didn't have to get there the job that made you feel dejected does this ring in any bells and i was too and, and I, I had a, a period of time at about uh um two terms so about six months of working at a place that i thought mm, this is this is not going to be good for me and it was it was difficult for me because i had been trusted and i had been i had been somebody that that everyone thought was really good um at my job at my first school and then i found that i wasn't really valued in that same way at my second school and I, the answer I found was just in actually something I've been doing all along, but it was just actually a way of thinking. And as soon as I saw that their realism for what it really was, as soon as I looked to, to kind of evaluate their ac um, actions and my own, I became much more free to think. And as soon as I started thinking about everything that was happening in a more evaluative sense, I was free to work more pragmatically um, and I could work with anybody. I found after that, I could work on any project. I could I could work across larger um, l larger remits in in the organisation, um, and I didn't lose any of my own convictions. So I th was a more effective professional for realising that evaluation was the the way to think. Realising that it was worth spending more time raising my level of thinking to a more evaluative person to, to literally evaluating everything everything that was said in a meeting every piece of work that i was doing starting from the point of evaluation rather than starting from the point of, of struggle rather than starting from the point uh, lower down that hierarchy of thinking anyway and I, I think i can teach you to think in that same way right this has been the end of my planned um <laughs> This has been the end of my planned sort of uh, sh um, chat here today. Uh, we've gone through and unboxed the Remarkable 2 type folio. I'm impressed. What did you guys think? Uh, I'm going to answer any questions now. And then that's me. I really hope that you've um, enjoyed this live stream. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going, as I said, an another trip and look forward to some um, my thoughts on what is the best travel e-ink combo that's coming as well. Um, here we are uh, i'm very interested in the books mirror series as well um you can just go ahead and buy uh, the books tab x and use it as a uh, external monitor or indeed you could buy the um <clears throat> you could buy the max lumi one which would be a very good choice there and actually just leave it plugged in and and have it that would be a cheaper way to get a sort of permanent ink monitor might be worth looking at. Uh, what's this question? This seems interesting. <clears throat> yeah, that's an interesting point, Disto. I never really thought about my my um, teaching as like content creation. My online sessions with students don't tie me half as much as the hours spent creating it. Yeah. That's actually interesting, yeah. Yeah, that, that's very true. Uh, just like this, I'm essentially, I've, I wrote a lesson plan for this, you know, like, oh, I'm going to say this, I'm going to talk through this. Um, these are the points where I'm going to stop for uh, engagement and, and then talk this. Very interesting point to make there. I think with me, I teach, um, I don't teach online exclusively uh, since COVID at least. And um, I think it is tiring for me being up on my feet and being at a whiteboard and dealing with the kids uh, face to face and kids young kids are sometimes challenging in terms of their behavior and that, um, that is a challenge it's a challenge that uh, I used to maybe relish more than than I do now and I sort of go through phases of of being like you know, you know where, where I've <laughs> um, where I've got the patience uh, and other times where I feel like I um, 
I, I don't have that patience. And what I find difficult sometimes about being a teacher is, so, say this in the, in the right way, it, it is that feeling of like things being a little bit out of control. And I think sometimes when somebody else is having a bad day, one of the young people is having a bad day and they bring that into the classroom and there's very little you can do to change that mood in that kind of hour that you have with them. Um, apart from just being brilliant and just being engaging and, and uh, that is very energy demanding as well. But I think the, the skill is the same. What you're saying is it's like creating content. And I did think that when I was writing some of this um, today, I, I thought about some things the way that I was writing these stories today, I thought about the way that I was, um, that I speak to my tutor group essentially, and I try to be uplifting for them. I try to be interesting for them. And um, I, I try to give them useful advice. And that's what I do here on the channel as well. So this is interesting. Let's crack on. Is there a wobble on the remarkable keyboard with a keyboard cover like the Tab Ultra with a keyboard cover? No, no, there's less. There is less, that is for sure. It is more um solid but I, I wouldn't say that there's something that i really um don't like do you mean wobble with the pen maybe vixis um or do you mean wobble literally on the table yeah there is more of that but i have a very unrepresentative table because my table is reclaimed wood my, my uh, desk is reclaimed wood so things do wobble more on here but i would say you are correct in yeah, that is a more stable platform. The remarkable because it does have that that flat back now, which is really really cool. That is a really clever way. You know, that hats off to them again for their design. That is a clever design of how to hide a keyboard case, so it looks really cool. Could I try to lap the? Yes, yeah, so it worked for. I'll try it now, but you won't be able to see it. But uh, like. <laughs> It's definitely doable. It's, I mean, you're gonna, you have to have your, your, your legs a bit too close together, as well, I would say. So you might just be, you might find it just a little bit uncomfortable to have your legs just a bit more close together than, than maybe you really want to to keep it stable. Um, they also the other thing about being comfortable on it for for typing for any long periods of time is um, don't try and put your hands together like this, you'll get sort of carpal tunnel in your wrists, but try and just, just accept that your hands aren't gonna be perfectly lying across the home key. Uh, let them spread a little bit and try and just type. I like it. Um, there is something that, yeah, when I, when I gave the news of this and um, I have a, a colleague who, who uses a Remarkable 2 and I showed her a picture of um, this keyboard case thinking, wow, she'll be excited to hear this news. No, she said straight away, so, but I like that the Remarkable 2 is not that. And there's a very different thing having it in this, in, in a meeting on a table, in this format, uh, it looks like a notebook. And you're working with somebody and you're just writing some something down you look up from it like this whereas people you know it's a very different thing it's not flat on the table it's not facing them they can't see what's on the screen it's a very different it's a very different vibe that you give off by having a screen in between you and a person. So I'd just be aware of using it like that. I, I do think the way to use this, and I think the way they're intending it is to actually go ahead and um, use the, the handwriting recognition. I think that's the way they intend you using this, use the handwriting recognition, and then use the keyboard case to make those edits. And I think that's the right, that's the right way. So that's what I'm gonna lean towards using it. Um, in, in, when I daily drive this to give you a full review. What type of app integration are you missing on the ink tablets kit? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I'm missing much on the, on the, on the um, books, to be honest. One thing I wish the books had was uh, just give me 
HDMI straight out of the USB-C port, please, books. Uh, I wish I had a dedicated drawing app because, you know, you, you, you want something that's going to be like, like as powerful as a kind of critter or, a, or a, um, what's the other one? Procreate. I know it's not going to be able to do color, although hopefully one day soon books will bring us a big, big size color um, ink tablet, and that'll be absolutely fabulous. And in prep preparedness for that, to make it a true destination for artists and drawing, I would love to see books actually make their own um, app. Why, why do they need to do that rather than just relying on things like uh, Photoshop? sketch and, and things like that is because it, it's about the it's about the um optimization for e-ink which is something that apps which are made for lcd or oled screens don't optimize well for e-ink basically they just don't what would i do yeah that will be the answer in my um <laughs> that will be what i will answer in my comparison video that I will make whether to go for the premium I mean there is very little difference although I did notice that there was a difference in terms of the pencil tool I found it quite difficult to use the books yeah I'm definitely you are definitely able to get finer you do have more control. I think it's just about um, it's about calibration, really. That the the um, pressure is better calibrated with the books. Sorry, pardon me. Sorry again. The pressure is better calibrated with the official remarkable pens and their nibs than it is with a, a different a third party stylus. But if you're interested in drawing, I would go with the remarkable stylus itself whether you need to fork out for the um, premium one. The marker plus is another question because I, I'm not wholly convinced about having the eraser on the back because you can just tap the eraser there and um, you know move backwards and forwards like this. So you can just use your left hand to tap the eraser if you are drawing and actually in a way that's less intrusive because you're not having to twist the whole pen around like this. Some people just like doing that, though, don't they? So, yeah, go. I don't think you necessarily need to go with the marker plus for drawing, because what you would do if you were an artist, in any case, you'd probably draw with a pencil, and then you would have an eraser probably in your hand as well, a like small, small eraser, rather than because eraser on the backs of, backs of pencils just wear out really quickly. It's just a convenient place to have them, whereas it's always there on screen anyway to access with your non drawing hand. Should you get a remarkable in Canada? Yes, but look into the alternatives as well. I've got many comparison videos, uh, Rudolph for you to go in and have, <coughs> excuse me, go in and have a good look and um, compare those things because there are loads of other things. Convince yourself which one is going <coughs> to, excuse me, convince yourself which one is going to fit best into your workflow and then buy with confidence because they're all excellent. A uh, couple of couple of test books units for my school district. I'm so impressed. Yeah, no better SC is blowing my mind. Yeah, a couple of the Air Two Plus as well. Fantastic. I think if you can integrate them within a school um, uh, school setting, I think the e ink is a no brainer. Really, um, the thing about e ink at the moment is it's still expensive compared to a sort of similar spec LCD tablet. And I think that's something that the companies and e-ink need to address really to get this size of screen down by um, the, this size of device needs to come down by about a hundred pounds. Really, this device should be 200 pounds plus accessories. The books devices should be, you know, 300 pounds plus accessories so somewhere in that kind of order. Um, rather than where they are at the minute, which is actually, you know, should a student get one? It's very difficult when they cost the same as an iPad that can do so much more than the Remarkable, or you have to go as as much as an iPad Pro to get, um, you know, the, the, the best books tablets. It's very difficult to recommend them over an LCD if it's going to be your sort of one device. But 
if you can afford it, um, then you won't look back. You just won't. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you have to do, my man, on books. You just have to learn. You, you're happy to play. If you're happy to play and learn, then definitely I would say it's um, it's the thing to do is is to do that. The thing to do with it is, is to go with books. If you're happy to learn something that isn't immediately always um, intuitive, then books is, is the one to go for, really. Uh Good. I'm glad you're having fun. I'm having fun too. Tip top tip for a new books. Uh, uh, settle down with the um, <laughs> settle down with the manual for an evening, and ha annotate the manual, and then export all the pages that you've annotated um, into its own little PDF. And uh, you will learn so much about what that can device can do, and you will save yourself a lot of headaches trying to figure things out on the fly. So read everything that it can do annotate everything it can do export all those pages and you can go you've got your own sort of personalized manual that you that has everything you need um, in there the other one is there is in in the settings there is a feedback to books um option <laughs> excuse me you can write in your feedback in there and if there's anything that you think the device is missing they're actually very good at thinking oh it's missing that and they add it in the next update so if there's anything that you want to do on there that you you want them to add then definitely use that feedback mode as well because that is fabulous um yeah i'm not sure what what that is converted to it's, it's like pretty much two canadian to one us is it um but yeah that's that's not not cheap is it and then um only need note to take device on a few pdfs yeah if that is honestly all you need then the remarkable will do it and we'll do it really, really well. The question is, Carlo, is will you want to do more in a couple of years or a year's time? In which case, a Note Air 2 Plus would be the thing to go. If you think there's a chance that you will actually want to do more afterwards, then go for the books device over the Remarkable. But if you're absolutely sure and you know there's no way you're doing anything apart from notes and some PDFs, then Remarkable 2 is going to do it for you. Thank you so much for spending, um, I guess, your evening, your afternoon. Um, have a very happy Easter to you all. And I will see you in another video coming soon. Thanks so much.